The Yashica Electro 35 GTN is the black version of the famous GSN model. Famous because it's the camera that was used by your friendly neighborhood superhero, Spider-Man. But I much prefer the GTN because it's all black and infinitely more beautiful than the GSN. The Yashica Electro 35 series was originally made in Japan and then in Hong Kong, and they were very, very popular in the 1960s and 70s. It is said that about 8 million of them were sold during that time. Like many rangefinder cameras of the time, the GTN is solid metal. However, it is larger than the average, especially when compared to my favorite rangefinder from the era, the Olympus 35RC. Some people count this larger size as a plus, while some people count it as a fault. It all depends on who you are and what you like, really. Personally, I think it's a little bit on the large side, especially if you consider that you have to carry it around all day if you're using it for street photography or you take it on holiday and you have to suspend it around your neck. It could be quite heavy and it could get really tiresome. So let's start with the lens. The lens has an aperture that opens to an incredible f1.7, so that's incredible for the range of camera. And also, it's got a focal length of 45 millimeters. The lens is fixed, so you can't interchange it like you can with SLRs and some interchangeable lens rangefinders. But that's not much of an issue, especially for people who like this camera. The 45 millimeter focal length falls nicely between the 35 millimeter and the 50 millimeter, which are the favorites for street photographers. The lens itself is single coated in amber and takes a filter size of 55 millimeters. The shutter speed, however, is something you have no control of. The GTN is an aperture priority only camera. This means that you cannot select the shutter speed in a manual way. The only choice you get here is auto, bulb, or flash. Talking of flash, it has a hot shoe and a PC sync for the flash, and the flash syncs to the maximum speed of 1 over 500. The selection for auto, bulb, or flash is at the tip of the lens. When you select the desired aperture, the camera selects the matching speed based on the ASA or ISO information selected and the built-in exposure meter, which is usually quite accurate actually. This is as long as your battery is not dead. The only indication you get about exposure is from the lights. Over indicates that the speed is too high for the camera to select and slow indicates that the speed is too low for the camera to select. So it indicates that you're gonna either get uh, an underexposed image or an overexposed or blurry image. The light is visible in the viewfinder. This is what I detest the most about the GTN or the GSN series. One of the areas where the Yash excels, however, is in the range of ISO information that you can put in. It's a staggering 25 to 1000 on this particular model. This may not sound so impressive, but trust me, this was absolutely impressive at the time. Another excellent feature is the viewfinder. Like I mentioned earlier, it shows the exposure indicator lights. It also includes frame lines to guide you. It doesn't, however, include markings for parallax error or aperture information. So in theory, you have to take your eyes off the viewfinder to adjust the exposure. However, the viewfinder is large and is bright, and the focus mechanism, which is of course the inbuilt rangefinder, makes it an absolute joy to use. The GTN takes a standard 35mm film format, and it's very, very easy to load. Once the film is loaded, the film is advanced via the film advanced crank, which is the standard one you find on any rangefinder of the time. Rewinding the film is also a breeze. You can do this via the rewind crank. The camera is powered by battery. The original battery was the PX32. And like many rangefinders of the time that used this battery, this is a mercury battery that is no longer available in most parts of the world. However, there are loads of alternatives. Also because the exposure isn't extremely voltage dependent, as long as you find a fitting battery in the range of 3.5 to 6 volts, you should be fine. I use a smaller lithium PX20 or a 4LR44, which is an alkaline battery of 6 volts. I use this with a piece of aluminium foil to compensate for the size difference. There is also a very handy battery check. Depending on your model, 
When you press the battery check button, a light lights up right next to the film advanced crank. So all the technical details apart, onto the most important part of a camera, the photos. I find that the Yashica takes really good photos, primarily due to the legendary lens. It performs beautifully in both low light and on a sunny day. The focal length and fast range finder focusing makes it a perfect camera for the street photographer or the photojournalist. However, it's quite large and a little heavy. If you're going to hang it around your neck all day, that might not be your cup of tea. Oh, and pray you never experience the pad of death issue.